What's up everybody, it's Aaron Engineered. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you're not new. Today we're going to be installing VMware's Type 1 Hypervisor ESXi 6.7 on this fancy little thumb drive and we're going to be installing it on my Dell R620 that you see behind me. So without further ado, let's go. Alright, in order to bake this cake we're going to need to get some ingredients together. Ingredient number one one and two. You're going to need two of these USB sticks. One of them is going to stay inside the server. I'll show you that here in a second since I have the hood popped. You can check this baby out once again if you haven't already. And the other one we're going to use to load our ISO image on. Stick it in the USB drive and then we're going to load it onto the other USB drive that's inside of here. This will then come out and I can go back to using it for whatever it is I was using it before. Uh, oddly enough, it's an HP thumbstick. Please don't sue me. I hope it doesn't create a black hole by sticking an HP thumbstick into a Dell PowerEdge. Fingers crossed. Okay, so I have the PowerEdge here. Um, it's not powered on because I have the lid off. But you can see back here, like I was showing you in the last video, if you haven't seen it, um, go check it out. Uh, basically, this is the iDRAC controller. And you can see this is still on because the power is still plugged in, so I'm still going to be able to address this um, from the iDRAC controller webpage. Although I can still turn it on from the front of here, which is what I'm going to do now. But I went ahead and before, start, before I started this, I stuck the USB drive that I'm actually going to load our hypervisor on into the server itself. Just another quick rundown of the specs here. Um, it is a Dell R620, it's a 16 core server. There are two. ES 2660s, uh, base clocked at 2.2 gigahertz. There's 96 gigs of RAM and four 600 gig terabyte or 600 gig drives up here. 600 terabytes. Good grief, that'd be big. Um, but one thing I want to point out too is this has this little kind of like bump up thing here. So usually when you plug a USB thumbstick into something, it's kind of weird because it just like flops around in there. But this is cool because. It actually has like this little lifter here so that you can actually just like slide it in very easily and it won't come out either. Not like this thing's moving around a whole lot, but you know, nevertheless, you want it to feel secure in there. Um, and the reason why this is inside too is so that you don't have it sticking out of the back or the front, um, like for instance, in, in some of these USB drives here um, that somebody could bump into or you know one of my bazillion wires could knock into and rip the thumb drive out. So alright let's get back to the computer and get ESXi loaded on that other thumb drive. Okay I have stuck the drive into my USB slot. I'm gonna open up my command prompt here. Go to disk partitioner. This is the built-in Windows disk partitioning tool. So this is super cool. Um, so I'm going to say list disk and you can see that I have two disks here. One of them is 465 gigabytes, the other one's 14 gigabytes. I'll give you a hint, this is not running my computer. So that's the one we're going to select because it's actually the thumb drive. And we're going to say select disk 2 and now it says disk 2 is selected and we're going to list the partitions within that disk. There is currently a primary partition. This is good, but I don't necessarily trust it, so I'm going to wipe it clean anyway. So let's just say select part 1, um, and then we're going to delete part. So now if we do a list part, there are no partitions. So now let's create partition primary and then hit list part again and we see the primary partition in there and there should be nothing on this. I feel super comfortable about that now. Um, and we'll hit exit. Uh, from here I'm going to eject. Sometimes it pops right up and asks you to format it but that's okay. Uh, I'm going to hit format disk, hit start tells me it's going to wipe everything out. Neat. That's kind of the idea here. Thank you so much for your help. Okay, format complete. The other 
piece of the puzzle for this is going to be a program like Rufus. If you don't know what that is, um, you can just go to rufus.ie. Uh, it allows you, as it says here, to create a bootable USB drive, but we're going to load our ISO onto this, um, and it's super quick, super easy. Um, you don't necessarily need to use this particular program, but uh, this is just my choice. So if you don't have that, go ahead and download it. Um, and then you'll also need the actual ISO itself. So if you haven't done that part, this is where you would probably kind of do this in the background and get that thing ready to go too. So under VMware under downloads, you can really just Google VMware downloads and you'll get this page right off. You do need to be logged in, so you, so you gotta log in, so you can see up in the corner there, I'm, I'm logged in. Um, and go to all products, VMware, vSphere, view download components. Now, one of the things that I like about this PowerEdge is that it has a custom ISO for the Dell uh, EMC, um, as long as, as well as like HP and some others. Um, unfortunately, if you check the compatibility list, the R620 doesn't show up in there, at least mine didn't. Um, so it's really weird. But really all that is is like a VMware like sign off sheet, hey we're comfortable with saying that we support this, so basically if you call in with a bunch of problems they're gonna say, okay yeah we do support that but um, somebody like me I'm not calling VMware anyway so I don't really care and truthfully I already have it loaded on like a old computer and it works perfectly so just because they don't support it and you don't see it in the actual compatibility tool don't freak out it'll still work and plenty of people just like me are running these things everywhere using that exact same image and everything's working perfect now I, I don't recommend that in a production environment or an enterprise uh, but you get the idea. This is all for funsies anyway. So to grab that specific image, if you go to custom ISOs and add-ons and go to OEM customized installer IDs, you'll see the Dell EMC add-on here and you will want to click go to downloads. Oh, I already have it downloaded to my desktop in a folder. All right, we've got the image downloaded that we wanted. It's on the desktop. Time to open up Rufus and create that custom boot disk. All right, we're gonna go to Rufus here. Yes. All right, disk or ISO image, yep. And the device is that 16 gig thumb drive that we just formatted. And we wanna find the actual image. Um, and you can see that's here in my desktop ISOs. Uh, custom, Dell EMC customized, that's us. Okay, open. And now we're gonna hit start. Gives us a nice warning, all data on the device will be destroyed. It's like it seems a bit ominous, but we're going to hit OK. And this shouldn't take too long. Um, in the meantime, make sure you're booting the server back up. I've already done that, so it's gone through the process and no longer sounds like I'm sitting on the runway at the airport. All right, so while that was doing its thing, uh, we got everything else ready to rock and roll here. Uh, it doesn't really give you like a, hey, I'm done. It just says ready and then start and close. So just know that if it says ready right here in the green, that you're actually ready. Um, so don't look for another prompt somewhere that you have to close out, which is typical. So I'm gonna hit close. And for the love of all things that are technology related, please, safely remove your hardware. Don't just rip it out. It's very painful and nobody likes to see it. All right, take it out of the computer. Now, let's go into the front of the R620. Oh, and just like that, lit up like a Christmas tree and we're done. No, just kidding, we've got so much more to do, oh my gosh. All right, from here, since I don't have KVM capabilities because I do not have a VGA cable, I'm gonna use the good old fashioned iDRAC controller, which is Dell's integrated Dell remote access controller. Super cool little feature. Um, you can actually access it uh, when the power's off. I mentioned that in a previous video, uh, but I've been doing everything from that, uh, so I'm gonna continue to do so. The IP address, just type it into your browser here. Um, so I'm gonna just try to refresh it here. Um, username by default is root, password is Calvin, all lowercase, C-A-L-V-I-N. 
hit submit and it's going to prompt me now to change the password which I highly recommend you do. I'm not changing it right now because I'm just trying to show you guys how to get in here. Uh, we'll hit continue. This is going to open up. Alrighty. Looks like everything is working properly. We're going to launch our virtual console preview. Keep. It's just a little Java window that opens up. Run. Run. Okay. So, what I'm going to need to do is make sure that when this boots up, it boots up to the front USB stick. Okay, so a little background on what I had to do because I jumped ahead a little bit. Uh, first of all, like this thing takes forever to boot up sometimes, but I has to go through all the system checks and things like that. But So what I did was I changed the next boot to the BIOS boot manager, and then I just did a control all delete. I did not mean to click that. Okay, from here I'm going to go to BIOS boot menu. Scanning for devices. Um, and you can see that I've got under hard drive C, this could be a little confusing because you don't see on the main page here the, the front USB stick. So if you go down to hard drive C, you'll see the front USB. And we're going to hit enter. And that's exactly what we want. Dell EMC ESXi. Hit enter. And now it's going to reboot again. And go into the ESXi installer. And this is going to take a couple of minutes, so go grab the adult beverage of your choice in the meantime. Right after a few minutes here. And hit enter and continue. Make you hit F11. Now it's gonna do its little thing here for a second. Um, you can see this is the RAID 5 virtual disk that I created, um, the Dell Perk, which is the RAID controller. It's showing me that I have 1.64 terabyte capacity. Uh, we don't want to use that. Um, this one is actually the USB drive that's in the front that we're going to take back out. And this is the one that's installed inside. So let's pick that guy. Enter OK. US defaults. Root password. And then enter to continue. Giving me the warning again, which is a good thing. And then we're gonna hit F11. Okay, actually had a couple of problems installing to that internal USB drive. In fact, I ended up burning through two of them in the process and for some reason it just kept getting stuck and I was getting a bunch of weird errors um, and I don't know if it's just these are old and maybe I should have bought a new one or what the deal was but at this point I, I've gotten back to the main install screen where you pick the disk that you want to install it to and I'm just gonna put it on um, our main disk here the, the main uh, storage 1.64 here Let's give it a shot. Okay, that was much faster. Um, now we're going to take the USB thumbstick out of the front and hit enter to reboot. And this will take a few minutes, so I'll just fast forward to all that. All right, after that's booted back up and it takes a while, so have a little patience. Uh, what we're looking for is this management IP, which you see here, 192.168.0.137. And 
that was from my DHCP server. So we're just gonna open up another browser and navigate to that. And it's gonna give us a, your connection is not private warning, because I do not have a certificate. Root. Username root, and then my password. We're gonna hit login. And there we have it. So we know that I had to use this space here to actually install the operating system because I was having all types of trouble with USB drives. A couple of those are getting tossed in the trash. And there you have it. So from here, usually what I would do is I'd go in and change a uh, static IP address. So um, it's just the best practice. You want to have these things statically assigned. Um, and then load my license, etc., in here. Um, and get some VMs running. So from here, some of the goals are gonna be to get all of the images that I have on my current server, which is down here, uh, loaded onto this so that I can repurpose that machine for something else. It's just an old computer, so we'll see. I haven't really decided what I wanted to do with it yet, but nevertheless, we're gonna add some more other cool stuff because we know this thing can do a lot. Um, so I'll probably make a video for each one of those. Um, so if you'd like to see some of that stuff, just hit the subscribe button and uh, it'll pop up and notify you. So I hope this has helped. If you're trying to install ASXi, I had a couple of hiccups, so hopefully you don't have to go through that as well. See ya! <laughs>